Hey, what's up? Name's Bobby. I run this shit. We lost audio for the first 20 minutes of this episode, but no big. You're just going to hear it from the camera. We just talked about the Flash movie. So if that's something you're interested in, unfortunately, it'll be with no audio, but it comes back around about 22 minutes in, and then you you hear this. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for that. And uh, the Flash was cool. You know numbers. You know change. You know that's a quarter. You know, you know change. You know that when you're angry, you're supposed to throw chairs. Because I feel like there's always stories about kindergarten throwing chairs, bro. I don't think that's what you're supposed to do, <laughs> yeah. but that is a thing. <laughs> they always <laughs> that, bro. You know what I mean? Like... Yo, what's up? Hey, Episode yo. 146 of the Joystick oh, Show. Sure. Real quick, let's just get it right out of the way. Fuck. Subscribe to Team Joystick. Like this episode of the Joystick Show. And that's literally, that's, that's it. That's it. We that's kept it very simple that time, yeah. Feels yeah. good. Mm -hmm. We got that done in about 10 seconds. Never that's make cool. it complex. That's weird. Um, yeah. yeah, we'll do the Joystick Show. It's, uh, it's going to be a fun one. We have a lot of stuff to talk about this week. We mm -hmm. got a lot of movies to talk about. We got some baseball games to talk about. We even got the end of the school year to talk Yay. about. Yeah. But uh, if that signs, and I can't speak, if that mm -hmm. signs like something you want to hear about, uh, if I can... Stick around. Yeah. In your ear holes. Real quick, uh, I just want to jump into my first topic of the episode because yeah. it's something that I have, as Jerry probably knows, I've right. been itching like to fucking topic. speak about for a while. And by when I say a while, I mean what, like five minutes? <laughs> yeah, we're... So earlier today, Jerry and I went to go watch The Flash. Mm -hmm. So real quick before I get into this, first of all, the first half of this will be spoiler free. Okay. Um, so run, I'll tell you when, I'll tell you when. There'll be graphics and everything. So just wait up. Say when vibes. But I was just going to say that I, originally I waited on getting the tickets. I kind of forgot to get them. And then when I wanted to buy late night tickets for tonight, Friday night, or yeah. rather, let me rephrase that, Thursday, Thursday night tickets, um, most of the seats were taken. Mm. So I was like, ah, shit, I waited too long. So I was like, oh, wait, Jerry doesn't work Fridays. So I hit Jerry up and I was like, yo, you want to go see the movie? And of course he's like, yeah. Right. So me, Jerry, Rafi, and my parents went to go watch the Flash movie. And another thing I wanted to note is I was actually, like, for a while, moving into the podcast, I was like, I'll just watch it on Saturday. But then I realized that we do this fucking show, and I was like, go watch the movie so you can talk about. It's like literally 60% of what I have to talk about on this fucking podcast is superhero-related films, and, and then 40% are non-superhero-related films. And then you should be sitting there and just sitting with all those thoughts for a week. Yeah, right? right? So, Stewing, yeah. which yeah. probably would make them a lot clearer and cohesive than what I'm about to say, but let's yeah. just pretend... You have to wait a week. Let's yeah. just pretend I've done 145 of these, and I'm kind of a veteran at this Light point. work, yeah. Light work, yeah. Uh, one of the best superhero movies I've ever seen in my life. Okay. I agree. Damn. Legitimately speaking. No, no way home. Spider Man. I heard a I heard a lot of people when the screenings came out about a month and a half ago say that it was an incredible movie, and I was one of those people that were like, "We'll see, we'll we'll see." Right. And now that I have seen, fucking awesome job. Uh, so many places I could jump from here, but I think one of the most controversial places, and I think one of the places to hook you in. Right. right, yeah, I was thinking about the same thing. Ezra Miller does an incredible job in this fucking movie. Oh, of course, yeah. He yeah, is yeah. an yeah. incredible Flash, to the point where I almost want to be like, can we forget he came yeah. out those people? You know, <laughs> really, like, yeah. We were like saying... The oh, that's that's a few yeah. things we have to forget, but never, I feel like a lot of people knew that. So going yeah. 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 No, but he did a, a fantastic job, even when you consider the fact that, and I don't think this is much of a spoiler because it's in the trailer, but he plays two versions of himself in the movie. That's never easy for an actor to do. <laughs> no word. And yeah, he does yeah. it impeccably. Right. Bro, the laugh of the, the like the oh yeah yeah because yeah. one of them is like uh he's like a, a college age one so yeah. he has like you know like a stoner laugh yeah he's like broski he talks like, like oh. that and then the other Barry is like older from our our generation or whatever so when he laughs like oh yeah. <laughs> it sounds like the fish from SpongeBob yeah, exactly. oh. um but fucking like there's scenes in the in the movie where like one of the Barrys will be carrying the other Barry. And even, like, with the face replacement they do, it's like, you can't even fucking tell. It's like Ezra is carrying Ezra Miller. And it's, like, so well done, the way they interact with each other, the way he interacts with other characters. I have to give him his flowers. They did a great job on this film. Yeah, Whether did. or not they're a good person is not for me to talk about. It's a different question. It's, it's a different totally question, right? separate evaluation. But is he a good Flash? He's a very good Flash. I'm sorry, they're a very good Flash. I gotta get the pronouns down. Regardless. Does he flash the audience? No, I'm afraid. He does, yeah. actually. There's a naked scene. He does. Yo, but that's the perfect flash. <laughs> but, uh, but regardless, Ezra does a great job. Um, to further that, the movie itself is so complex in terms of like what it serves. It has so many really great emotional parts in it that will either make you cry or make you nostalgic or just make you feel to some degree. 
But at the same time, the action sequences are fucking awesome. Uh, it's funny, we were talking about this too, but not in like that MCU problem where everything right. is funny. And I even added that the fact that The Flash is technically the comic relief in the DC Universe just makes it feel that much... Like he can be funny? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And even then, it's not like every... Word. In fact, I'd argue he only jokes to get right. out of awkward situations right. and shit like that. For the most part of the movie, everything is very serious to him. Every all Everything he does is purpose. So I would be terrified of a Marvel Flash movie. Oh, for sure. Yeah. All those jokes. Oh, that right. Right. He oh, like, hey, Batman. Eating yeah. like 12 hot dogs a second. Like, yeah. I gotta eat all this food. He <laughs> <laughs> slapped oh, the Lord. Right. Taking it to another thing <laughs> that I wanted to speak about. Uh, I just thought that, obviously speaking, well, I, we'll get to this in a second. Let me start here. The movie's called The Flash. It is a Flash movie. And Jesus Christ, does it play... It, it's like a love letter to the character. Like, every piece right. of what The Flash is is represented into this movie and done so in a non-annoying way. The fact that he needs to eat a bunch of calories to c contain his energy. It's, like, built into his suit. It's, like, a running... It's not like a gag. It's, a, it's, it's like, a problem he yeah. faces throughout the movie. Like, he needs to continue eating. Uh, his ability to face through objects. Never been seen before in the movies. They do it so awesome. The first time I saw it, I was like, what the fuck? The Speed Force looks fucking The Speed dope. Force is cool. Um, so many other awesome things, but like they did such an incredible job bringing justice, no pun intended, to this character. Can I interject for yeah. a second? I thought he just ran fast. No. I mean, yeah, word. I, 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 I was like, yo, I was like, yo, he could save the day because he could be there really no, quickly. Honestly, <laughs> and now there's like a there's like a bar, there's, there's like a, a turbo limit. meter. No, I was, that I was, shit's crazy. I, that's crazy. I, was I never knew that. this to my mom before we left because like the, I was doing Flash like, Phelps over here eating twenty thousand calories. No, no, seriously, I was yeah. I was talking to my mom before we left. I was watching a video because it was like a three issue comic series that came out that leads into the movie that explains some stuff that don't get that doesn't get explained in the movie not important stuff but right. point is I was Extra telling shit. my mom I was like a lot of people just think mm -hmm. that the Flash has like super speed and he runs fast but he does everything fast the mm -hmm. Flash talks fast the Flash can move parts of his body specifically very fast to face he wrote my objects. essay he can mm -hmm. he's, he's not only is he faster than the speed of light he can time travel with how fast he is mm -hmm. and what I think is one of his coolest attributes that almost nobody fucking knows about the flash is he thinks at the speed of light so he's one of the smartest people in the dc universe in fact a lot of people have them on his like their top 10 for best detective right under batman because he just thinks of everything he's a smart guy. stupidly fast right um so super great justice to the character and then to swing it on to another character which jerry will tell you is very featured is prominently featured in this film it's almost like it should have been the Flash and Batman movie. Yeah, absolutely. Batman is a very big player in this movie, and without getting into the spoiler part, which we're getting close to, uh, both Batmans, because Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton both reprised their role as Batman in this film, fucking nailed it. It was fucking sick. Uh, and the last thing I'll say before we start getting into spoiler territory is I found out this morning that the man who directed uh, the Flash movie, his name is Andy Muschietti or something like that, mm -hmm. is actually, they just announced he's the one directing the new Batman spent, like, reboot. So the one with Pattinson? No, like the new Batman. In There's the a movie. new new? Yeah, they're making Batman the Brave and the Bold, which is going to feature his son Damian Wayne, and that's going to be in the DCU. And they've already explained that Robert Pattinson's Batman will continue as part of a side story. It's DC Elseworlds, so okay. they make all those, right? Um, but yeah, Batman is featured heavily in the film. I'd argue like 30 to 40% of the movie is Batman, so it's like that big. <clears throat> and one of the best representations I've seen of Batman ever. So now we're going to start getting into some spoilery territory. So if you don't want to get the Flash spoiled for you, go to the chapters in the description, click the next one. It's probably going to be called We Kill Dylan Live on the Podcast, mm -hmm. and you know, you'll get to enjoy that. You know why it was good? You know why Batman felt, it felt like so much more of a Batman movie? Because there weren't Batman villains, and it wasn't so like dark like Batman individual movies are like they, if you think the trilogy is mm -hmm. like every character has kinda, this I kind of like that tragic movie Batman's like, always the same vibe yeah. it's and always like it's dark like, and oh, dreary here's Batman here's the Batmobile here's the Batcave the here's Batmobile the in daytime <laughs> it's like what the no, fuck yeah. <laughs> so one thing that I love that this movie does it's not that huge of a spoiler but they really started to I feel like this was their movie to test the waters with how they're going to change the tonality and the things that are happening in the DCU because you could tell they're starting to pull some pieces from the MCU and what's successful there. And one thing I thought was phenomenal is that they're starting finally to piece themselves away from that realistic, gritty feel that the DC Universe had up until now. Mm -hmm. And they're starting to approach a way more colorful, 
more, dare I say, superhero-esque style of film. Mm -hmm. And weirdly enough, they do that without making it feel too... In your face. Over the top or in the yeah. face, yeah. So that being said, to spoil stuff, Batman's <laughs> interpretation, fucking sick. Ben Affleck is the first Batman we see in the movie, and he Andrew. has the Bat Cycle, right? His Bat Cycle, as you can imagine, does like 11,000 different things. The Bat Armor is sick. I even like Ben Affleck as Batman the most in this movie for whatever yeah. reason. Like, his he Bat voice good. is good. He's like, yeah, we put, like, it was awesome. It was super sick. Uh, even better than Ben Affleck's Batman, Michael Keaton's fucking Batman. Yeah. Bat Plane, Bat Cave, obviously reprising his role from the good old days. I love that he still wears the same fucking rubber suit that he can't move his head in, so if Batman wants to turn right, he has to turn his entire body right. So fucking great. But one scene in particular that I loved is there's a scene where they go to Siberia to try and rescue uh, Supergirl, Kara L, who they think is Superman. Because in this universe, they think that Superman exists. They don't know that it's actually his cousin, right? In that scene, it's kind of the only time in the movie Supergirl. we get to see Michael Keaton's Batman fight kind of hand-to-hand with other baddies. And it was like watching something straight out of Arkham Asylum, the game. This guy is bat grappling motherfuckers, throwing batarangs from you everywhere. You see, like, the circle and triangle above like, all Like, it was so refreshing to see Batman use some fucking gadgets for once. Yeah. It was refreshing to see Batman glide with his cape everywhere. Like, that is what Batman does. I mean, that's, that's just a guy in a suit. That's his whole shtick. Like, you know, I, I feel like... He's a symbol. No, but it's true. Christopher Nolan fucked it up, I feel, because Christopher Nolan just would do, like... It would be like the Batmobile, or it would be like a close fighting shot. Yeah. And there wouldn't be any And, and that's not to say that those movies aren't great. They're great, but they're but not. But they don't encapsulate, like, like, this is the best, this is the closest interpretation we've gotten to comic book Batman. Yeah. He fucking kicks ass, he's smart as shit, and he has so many vehicles and gadgets, and that's yeah. what I want out of a Batman. That, well, that kind of goes back to what you said, it feels more cartoony, because, and realistically, that whole gliding in the bat and this kind of silly, but... If you embrace that comic booky style, it and, makes and sense. You made a joke about it, but even the creators of Batman, all Batman fans, he's not supposed to be a guy in a suit. He is a symbol. Like that's why the villains and everybody look at Batman and they're like, "Is this guy a human being?" Like, there's people who think he's Kryptonian, like Superman. Obviously, he's a reader. He's beyond a hero. Know that he's just a guy in a no, suit. No, he's behind the regular guy. No, he's but the whole point entity. is that something... the people in that universe are supposed to view Batman the same exact way they view fucking Superman. Superman. Yeah. It's like this guy is not from here, but he is. That's yeah, he's cool. the rich kid. Another thing I wanted to spoil, this is, I told Joey early, uh, upstairs before we started the podcast, there was something I wanted to tell him, but I wanted to tell him on the podcast. Joey. They made an interesting creative decision that I think worked out really well, and they made our boy Barry Allen half Hispanic. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, they show in the flashback scene that his mother, who uh, famously dies in the comic books, Nora Allen, is actually Hispanic. And there's a really touching scene in a flashback where, let me tell you, let me, uh, let me ask you if this sounds familiar where they're making food, and a salsa song starts to play on the radio, so she grabs her 12-year-old son and starts dancing with him in the kitchen and singing the song to him. Fucking mm. super good. And none of that is in-your-face or heartfelt or cheesy. Okay. It's actually, it just, fact, it feels like, right. They don't even moment. really mention the Hispanic stuff ever. It's yeah. just in the flashback, we're like, oh, she's Spanish. This is what happens. She speaks, happens. Spanish. She speaks Spanish. Even the dad walks in and says something like, oh, I just me or something, even though he's white or whatever. But never in the movie is it really like... In it's your just, face. It's just, yeah. it's just something that needs to be established, and that's it. It's not like other movies where that's like, pride. Like, I'm yeah, the, so, you know? so they go to the... So the whole thing is that time gets messed up because he because of a jar of tomato so i feel like if it would have been thrown in your face we're like oh grab some like seasoning from oh like, that's so you know, that goes missing bro oh yeah, my yeah, god yeah. but she's just they making spaghetti like, they you know what I mean? OD. <laughs> no it's just like a complete she's like i'm making my infamous dish from yeah. our culture yeah. Yeah. exactly it's just, it's just spaghetti, spaghetti right? with red yeah. sauce and she's he's mad that the dad didn't get the right sauce or something like that and yeah. that's what sets off the chain of events <clears throat> her murder and him getting uh frames for her murder spaghetti sauce yeah yeah. Well, the idea is like... Because the, the dad went back to... And then the mom... Oh. The dad went back to get the sauce. The, the mom was murdered in that time, and the dad was framed for the murder, but obviously he and the son knew that he was not there because he was at the supermarket getting the sauce. Right. So that kind of ends up being this thing in the movie where he realizes if she got the sauce, she would have never been killed, and he would have never been arrested. And sure enough, that's like one of the first things in the movie he does is he goes, he puts the sauce in her cart, and then runs away, and then sure enough... It works. And like 18 years later, she's still alive. They're a happy family. But the one big thing that he forgets to think of is that 
there's already a Barry Allen in that universe living that life. And that's where kind of that That's starts. where the two come. And furthermore, mm. Barry ends up losing, like, the real Barry, our Barry, ends up losing his powers, and the 18-year-old Barry gets them. So it kind of becomes a coaching movie where he's like, this is what you have to do, and the 18-year-old kid just wants to be like, but I run fast, and I do this. I run fast. There's multiple times in the movie, like, one of the running so, jokes so is like a father is like, all right, I'm going to tell you something now. One of the running jokes is Sorry. that... One of the running <laughs> yeah. jokes... Is, I'm not even <laughs> is that he never lets Barry finish his sentences. So every time he's like, alright, so what are you going to do for this? He's like, alright, and he goes and does it and fucks up spectacularly. But that's how he like learns to be a better Flash, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and then... So it's kind of like the, like the Spider-Man, the, the, the older one. I get it, yeah, that's cool. And then finally, the so last So he cuts thing, off all their sentences? What? <laughs> like, Barry cuts kind of, off all their sentences? I don't know what you're talking about. Can you let me talk about <laughs> the fucking thing? I'm actually getting mad now. <laughs> I did it purposely. So right. fucking anyway, uh, the last thing I wanted to spoil was all the cameos that that movie has. Because holy fucking shit. I, yeah. Honestly speaking, with the amount of cameos that were in that movie, the fact that I hadn't heard about a single one of them was actually kind of shocking. So most of the, well, to get the first one out of the way, uh, the first cameo happens in the first action sequence of the movie when Ben Affleck Batman is about to fall off a bridge, and then honestly, out of fucking nowhere, Wonder Woman shows up and lassos his hand and what? saves him. So Gal Gadot's in the movie, no joke, for no more than a minute. So, yes. Love Gal Got It. So that, honestly, I guess it's kind it. of a... Uh, Gal Got It. I, I guess it's kind of a, <laughs> of a criticism, but honestly, like... You could argue she didn't really need to be in the movie, but at the same time, she's in it for so little that you just kind of forget about it later right. on in it. So even I, talking about it, I was like, oh yeah, she's in the movie for like 30 seconds. The biggest chunk of cameos actually happens uh, towards the end of the movie when it's shown visually what is happening because of the Flash kind of fucking up the multiverse. And in their or interpretation of it, it's like all of these actual physical spherical universes colliding with each other and like being destroyed. But what's really cool for us as a viewer is they actually go into these universes to see what the Superman and the Batman and the Flash of these universes look oh, and feel like. Yeah. That's and they're cool. all throwbacks to original people who played those characters. That's cool. So there's a black and white world, and when it zooms into that, it's the original Superman from like the 1940s TV show in black and white and all that stuff. There's one where it goes to like a uh, 60s, 70s world and it's Christopher Reeves. They like reanimated him to be Superman, which wow. is fucking awesome. There's one where they sh it's like the Adam West Batman world and you hear like the stop there, Batman, kapow, things, stuff like that. And one of the funnier ones is there's a universe where Superman is Nicolas Cage, which is mm -hmm. a throwback to the Superman Nicolas Cage movie that was supposed to be made but never went through. Yeah. So somewhere out there is an actual Nicolas Cage Superman. That's incredible. It's a really funny cameo, but when you know the story and you see it, you're like, that's oh, funny. Yeah, there was a guy that's that was cool. fucking dying in the theaters. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but uh, arguably the craziest cameo in the movie comes at the very end when Barry is leaving the courthouse and he's finally going to recap everything that's happened with Bruce Wayne. All right. So... <laughs> okay. Keep yeah. in mind, we start off with Ben Affleck, Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Okay. Goes back in time to a different universe. Now we have Michael Keaton, Bruce Wayne, Batman. Okay. okay. However, when Barry comes third, back to the universe the that he originally movie. existed in, some things have changed. And the biggest thing that has changed is Ben Affleck is no longer Bruce Wayne. <laughs> It is arguably the greatest Batman of all time, George Clooney. Let's go! <laughs> George Clooney shows up in a sharp-ass suit and tie, sunglasses, nice white beard, and he's like, what's up, Barry? And Barry's like, what the fuck is going on? He's, he's like, you're not Batman. He's like, and he's like, Barry, what are you talking about? <laughs> so he's, he's his Bruce, but he's completely changed physically, like who he is. Nice. As far as what they're going to do with that or how far that's going to go, I don't know. But I, I think it was, was like a gag. Fucking, I think it was a gag, but I think it was hilarious. Yeah. Um... They'll flip it. <laughs> They'll flip it. But, uh, really important. Fuck. Oh, and then the last cameo is the post credit scene is just kind of a joke scene with uh, Jason Momoa's Aquaman, where the Flash is trying to take care of him after a hard night of drinking. Oh, nice. But uh, a lot of cameos in that movie, and I gotta say, like, just everything about the movie in terms of being a superhero movie was fantastic. Like, the action sequences were over the top, but not too stupid, you know? It's not like we're, they were doing like action sequences to paint it black by the Rolling Stones and shit. It was just very serious, kind of like, 
they, they use the Batman theme heavily. It feels like a movie for these characters and not these characters in a new movie in this generation, if that makes sense. Well, it was really, I feel like there's an alternate, there's, a, there's an alternate reality or universe where, like, it's the Suicide Squad in it, because it almost is. There's, yeah. like, two Batmans, there's two Flashes. It's like, if the wrong person got their hands on this, it could have very easily turned into, like, highlight porn, yeah. where everyone's just fighting each other, and it's all, this Batman's fighting the other Batman, right, right. and they're <laughs> kissing, you know? And just to give a, 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 a noted shout-out to uh, Supergirl, pretty fucking dope as well. Shout-out to Kara L. I don't know the actress who plays her, but uh, she did a really good okay. job. Also, just think that, like, it felt weird, like, we didn't get Superman in this movie, but all of the sequences with Supergirl were like some of the best. They were super, They were like the best Superman s action sequences I've ever seen. To the point where I'm like, how come we haven't seen this yet with him? You know what I mean? Like the actual <laughs> fucking character. Like, don't get me wrong. Yeah, let's go with it. No yeah, fucking. Yeah. I was like, Superman's kind of tacky though. Yeah, like yeah, he really yeah, is. It's like it it's is. it's really hard to do a good Superman. No, it's like. But that's the thing. Mm. What people don't get is like Superman really should just be tossing these motherfuckers around. Yeah. And that's what she does. It's not yeah, supposed to be Jesus. cool. It's not supposed to be like a great struggle. It's low key like this guy's just like, stop or I'm gonna have to beat the shit out of you, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Right? And that's what she does. It's really I am a low fucking low. alien. Just bah. Like, so, you really think you're gonna stop me? That being said, I think I'm going to give the Flash two out of five. I'm gonna go nine. Five out of nine. Nine? Yeah. I really don't have that many things bad to say about it. In fact, I was I was gonna say one thing. I almost never really credited a movie. It had a really good pacing, if that makes sense. Like every point in the movie, I was invested. That's a very big. Thing I didn't, for I didn't me. feel like I was like get to that thing I'm waiting for. Yeah, like I was yeah, always yeah. in something new that was like okay, yeah, let's just yeah. be in this part. There was enough stuff going on. Yeah. I think I'll just end that on. Uh, I hate good to movie. say it, but keep Ezra, man. Good movie. Keep Ezra. Mm -hmm. DC. Put him in rehab, rehab, but keep Ezra. <laughs> put him in rehab. Put the little uh, ankle. Ankle monitor, yeah. ankle monitor on him for a bit, you know, but... Make sure he doesn't phase out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sick, sick movie. Dope, dope, dope stuff. Okay. Dope. Yeah, good movie. I think I'm gonna go take my father to see that. Sounds some, like something he'd like. He loves the Michael Keaton Batman. I remember he saw the trailer pretty late, and then he was like, Oh shit, that's Michael Keaton! If he, he loves the Michael movie. Keaton Batman, he's gonna love this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take him to see this movie then. This Mike, Michael like Keaton might be the shining star of the film, Loki. He's that. I'll take my dad. My dad loves the Flash show too, so. Yeah. That's crazy. That's Can I nice swing into what I was gonna say since. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this. Studying? Yeah, I came here studying something. It's a reviewer I, uh, I like uh, posted. The most controversial like Disney show that got like pulled off immediately and is now like going through some like changes. So apparently that there was a, a show created by uh, I think half Latina woman and she called the show Oye Primos, which is a show about a little girl living in California with her white father and Hispanic mother and all their cousins are coming over or she lives with all her cousins in, in Hollywood yeah. in LA. And uh, the first thing people noticed from, like, different, like, Spanish-speaking places, they were like, Oye Primos is not the correct terminology. Oye is singular. So if you're saying Primos... Sound speed. We lost all that audio. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Just use the camera audio. Yeah. We're back to microphones, guys. Shit, sorry. Um, yeah, so they were like, first things first, Oye Primos, Oye is singular and not the the correct term to use it. They basically used the wrong term. And then that created a whole debate of people like, yeah, that's the wrong term. And I was like, how are you going to make a Latino show that that is using the Spanish wrong? And then she had she came not apologizing but very smug like I don't care. Like that's yeah. the way I speak and if you're going to judge me for the way I speak, I'm I'm uh Latino America, American, American Latino. So that's the way I speak. And it just comes off like very smug. Like you could defend your case, but she was just like, so I, <laughs> and, and I was like, all right, that's not the best way to get people on your side. Not only that, her crew, crew are taken to Twitter and fighting people like it. They're not most companies and places are like, oh, you know, we're sorry. Or, well, I did this. This is my explanations. Her and her crew are like, Go, no grammar nazi like picking fights with people like i'm like oh shit this is a very yeah. hostile not to like say disney's the best at pr but like they were probably not fucking happy at all <laughs> disney was probably fucking pissed. oh word no they were probably mad uh what else uh her youngest cousin is named coquita 
which uh, to some places means w- a woman's genitalia. And they were like, that's like, you're, everything is wrong. Like, not all, <laughs> like, different places speak the same kind of Spanish. Um, what else happened? Crew being that. Um, the place they live in is called Terremoto Heights, which translates to Earthquake Heights. And a lot of uh, Spanish countries deal with very severe earthquakes. I was about to say, like, Chile is probably fucking yeah. pissed. They're like, yo, what the fuck, bro? Yeah, like, don't. Like, so you tried to make an experience from a Latin household in America that when it airs to other, like, Latin places, they're like, this isn't the way, this isn't how we do it. Yeah. And that word means this. So you're trying to create an experience. And they're, they're wondering, you know, Disney got it right with Coco and then did pretty well with Encanto. And then here comes this show and it's like doing everything wrong where it's like, no, they got cousins named Nacho. They got like, like they're like doing everything wrong. One crewmate, uh, crew member, sounds like I'm talking about Among Us. Um, <laughs> Pirates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he said, uh, he said if uh, day of like day of recognition, day of pride, I want to thank my parents because, you know, if they stood in the shithole country then uh, I probably wouldn't get into the position that I am. And then ended it with hashtag immigrants make America great. And everyone doesn't know if he was literally calling his place a shithole country or mocking Trump. But there was no quotation marks or anything on that. So it's just like a long list of problems that the crew is, is getting. And they're like Disney is really considering like, all right, get rid of it. Like if it's going to cause this much problem. And uh, the guy I reviewed was saying, he says, from now on, I think if Disney does enter any cultural story, they're going to be like extra on top of that because they don't want to recreate uh, what's going on with this show. Yeah. You mean like they should have been doing from the start? Yeah. Where, <laughs> I think, no, I think for their movies, you know, I said it a lot, Coco and Encanto, yeah. where like movies, so they needed that attention to detail. But this is a show where they were just kind of like, all right, yeah. Do Even it. Then, that's no excuse. It's Disney. You have yeah, a fucking. I, where, you got a reputation. I think. And you have I think that's the, the problem. If, if like if this was like a small indie animation, like if this was DreamWorks, no I'd be like, True. you know, then, and there would be less backlash because I feel like other, not even DreamWorks, but like if a smaller company did it, they don't have like a worldwide presence. And I was like, Disney yeah. is like worldwide. So when you make an Amer- a half American, half Latino thing, it just comes off as like offensive almost. And to touch on the worldwide thing, they're a company that specifically deals with making projects and stories that are international like yeah these characters and also come like coco and kanto it's very like setting based i feel like this one is very like tongue-in-cheek which isn't good when you're trying to like represent tell a, a culture. cultural story yeah, yeah it's like oh let's name them this because yeah. oh, like it doesn't really telling cultural stories is hard because you want to be able to you want to be able to you know express what it's like to be part of that culture without it feeling to push you without it feeling forced or fake like it's a kind of an interesting thing that i think about remember that show one day at a time mm-hmm. yeah like i love that show but i even think that show does it a little too much where it's like everything is hispanic 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 and coming from a hispanic household it's not always hispanic 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 yeah, part especially of, in america it's no like i it, and, and it, I, it, I i can't speak for every culture because obviously i'm one but from the people that I know who come from like even immigrant families and stuff like that, they're very Americanized. They speak pretty normal English to each other. Even if it's Spanish, it's Spanglish and stuff like that. Whereas we get these interpretations where it's like these families eat tacos every night. And then, they, yeah, and they're you know, super private. Like, remember, yeah. Like, we have to make this. But it's like, no, my Everyone mom buys pizza every, every day. day. <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> like, it's never. And also, like, immigrants, meal. too. Like, you came to America. Like, obviously, you want to be American at least a little bit. Yeah, you know? at like, least a like little kinda, bit. Then, yeah, like, you want to. It's assimilation, but also it's like a little tiny bit where it's like. Right. I, I argue, like, the perfect medium is showing what it's like to actually be a person from that culture, but living in. In this country and kind of what that means uh, is, is there an american culture of course there's an american culture yeah softball fourth of july you know, maybe not that exactly <laughs> but fucking. even us like there are all our states we're so culturally different going to a vineyard <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i'm just trying to think it's the northeast yeah just the northeast yeah there's, there's vineyards elsewhere but uh yeah i mean shout out to the disney disney man disney and their spanish stuff yeah. shout out to the hispanic people <laughs> Thanks, Tom. We yeah. needed that Thanks, one. <laughs> <laughs> we needed that representation. I got you. What else happened? You saw the graduation? Yeah. I mean, that's, that? that's you. I mean, you're, well, yeah, I, I you. had an actual graduation like where the children came with like, cap and gowns and stuff. To your graduation? To my graduation. Wow, you have a lot of support, man. Um, Woo! 
Joey. <laughs> just a crowd of children. Yeah. Um, no, it was my student's graduation. And I've been practicing for like the past maybe two and a half weeks of just doing the same song, how we're entering the auditorium, how we're climbing out on the stage, like practicing every day. And today was the day. And I'm like going down, we're going down the line, going down the middle. We make a left around the computer, the table. We go up the stairs and then they walk straight down. So I go, I go to my, we go straight. We make a left around the computer, go up the stairs. And I count, I'm like, all right, one, two. And then there's a huge gap. And I'm like, what? I look up and it's one of my students that was like waving and having a conversation with her grandparents that was in the aisle. And I was like, no, come, 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 come. And then she was like, oh, and she kept walking down and then made a right and then started going to the right of the stage. And now all the other kids start <laughs> going, following her. Not one of them is like, wait a minute. We went left yeah. every day. No, she changed the whole orders. And She's I was a like, leader, yo. She's going to grow up and do big things. <laughs> she would. But I was like, or I, just talk to her I grandma. I feel like they should have got left back for that shit. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no fucking directions. You bro. thought you were graduating. You thought, bitch. Like, no, left, right. We'll, we'll try this again next year. <laughs> <laughs> All over again. What color is your gown? Yellow? No, it's blue. You fail. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like you got to repeat all 100, like 35 plus days. Get fucked. Just to get this diploma. Of the hardest grade. Of the hardest grade. <laughs> Yo, kindergarten Yo, might be the hardest grade. Is it? <laughs> You're a kid, like you don't know anything. Yeah, you I come out like, of kindergarten, you know some shit. Yo, but I also feel you know like colors, you know shapes, you know fucking time, kindergarten, you know numbers, you know change, you know that's a quarter. You know, you know change. You know that when you're angry, you're supposed to throw chairs. Because I feel like there's always stories about kindergarten throwing chairs, bro. I don't think that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. But that is a thing. <laughs> they always <laughs> do that, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's just because they're like. Like like face level, you know, when you put that, them on that, top th- of your those desk. are those are actually the gifted children, the ones that don't throw chairs. <laughs> it's like you're special. You didn't bug out you know, when we brought I, you. I think it's that their chair height. So a chair is like the ultimate weapon for them. Yeah, you like know, this like is I'm, as big as me. You know, like Friday. I'm hitting you with me. Like, Did anybody have that thing in like elementary school? Like Fridays, you had to put up your chair on the desk. They were like, the janitor is gonna sweep. I you think they did that up. when I was in first grade. <laughs> did you go to the army? What Jerry, the Jerry, <laughs> Jerry, we had, we had, we had to Jerry, oh Jerry, 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 <laughs> Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. That is a crucial part of my adult job. <laughs> Every day after work, I put up all of the chairs on top of the table so that the janitors can have an easier time. So that is a 100% legitimate yeah. fact. Yeah. And speaking as both someone who has been in the janitorial department and somebody who has been in the education department, it is one of the best things you can do as a human being. <laughs> so if you ever work in a school, put those fucking oh, chairs wait, up. Wait. Honestly. Oh, I did that too. Like you flip it over and put yeah. like the top part Either on the thing. Either you flip it over or you stack them on yeah, top. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. there was like it little... It makes the janitor's job. I have like, to do that 30 times a day. It's actually a good they little workout. They didn't work do out. it? <laughs> the thing is, is we were supposed to make the kids do it. But they're always like, I put one up and then they get online. <laughs> so what I've found to be a better method, if, if I just start doing like two tables, the kids who actually want to help will get up and start doing it. So I don't actually do all 30, but I end up doing half. And then I have like two or three kids who help out. But The slaves. Crucial part. Shout out <laughs> to the chairs, man. And an under is just like gum or like little dicks drawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the time. It's all all the time. Man. Dicks that don't even look like dicks. You're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Just like, why are the balls big that big? <laughs> We're critiquing little kids and how they. Like you're not Jose. Your ball shouldn't be that large. No, man. People get creative with fucking. <laughs> There's nothing sci-fi funny in balls third grade, out here. Bro. And not to touch on <laughs> Let that. Me draw you know, a dick it was the, it was the end of, of my school year as well at my job, and uh, I just it's not really like anything funny, but what was kind of interesting is when I got to work, my boss told me she was like, "We have a modified program, which basically means we do like bullshit, like the kids are gonna play soccer or they're gonna listen to music or something." Uh, but then she told me uh, if you could pick two students from the year to be certificate or what is I don't know what the fucking verb for that is you get a certificate and it's basically to be Honored. like my, my you know like my Awarded. star students for the year right okay so I was like bet and I had two students that I love and I was like out of all of them they're the two that like willingly always want to be in film class they always they they never miss and they're like very involved in the creative process so I picked them too and at the end of the day. They did like an award ceremony where they gave out all the medals and all the stuff. And what was kind of fucked up is all the sports teams got medals 
And how it worked was all the other classes for all the other kids who weren't on sports teams were going to get certificates for their classes. Okay. But the girl who was in charge of making the certificates couldn't get them done in time. So we actually couldn't give any of the kids certificates. Damn. So the, the kids were giving them today, the day that I don't go into work. So I was mm. like, shit, you know, and we were all supposed to actually get up there and say stuff about mm. them or whatever. So I felt bad. So at the end of the day, when they were like leaving, I brought them to me and I was like, yo, yo, come over here. And they both came. And I basically told them like what I wanted to say to them. I was like, guys, I had a great year with you. We had such great laughs. We made awesome stuff. We got to hang out all the time. And I just want to let you know that you were like some of my favorite students. This is one of my favorite classes I've ever had. And I told them, I was like, guys, just have a fun summer, have a safe summer so that you guys can come back and we can do some more fun stuff. And I told them no matter what happens, continue to chase your creative passions because if you keep singing and you keep drawing, I already know that you guys are going to go far because I have not met kids who are this dedicated to the craft. I think it was more personal that you told them in person rather than in like They a, started fun. crying. Oh, yeah. No, no, sure. yeah, yeah, that, yeah. You no. made their fucking day, I was Bob. like, That's I, to the point where I was like, what the fuck are you doing? I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, shit. And my, my word words made you feel emotional no yeah one of the what kids the was like was like one of the kids was like you're one of my favorite teachers man you've been one of the best. i can't wait to do eighth grade with you and then the other <laughs> one was in sixth grade going to seventh he was like bob you're my favorite <laughs> and it went to be fair this kid always hugs me when he sees me he's like why you always go five fives you know i'm gonna hug you man and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but when he hugged me he was like i guess i just didn't put into perspective that this was gonna be our last class for the, till the summer and i was like it's okay man we're gonna do more but he was like so distraught oh, i was like bro yeah, well, we only just realized <laughs> <laughs> He was like, wait, no, wait. <laughs> no, but it's true because those kids have like super fun days and they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And dope. then it all sinks in and they're like, we're not going to hang out. You know what I mean? And for what it's worth, these after school programs are big for these kids because mm. this is where, you know, where their parents they're here for them. hours. It's a big, it's a big social thing for them. These are like their friends and stuff. So mm. shout outs to my theater after school class. I taught for a bit before COVID happened. I don't think my, the supervisor at that job liked me or liked my teaching methods. <laughs> so no, like COVID good, was like a blessing to her. You're like good. I can fire him without saying anything. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm like tenured, but I'm not actually tenured. I'm just, just like, vibing, bro. yeah, just, yeah. That's, that's, that's it's happening. weird. Cause like my boss kind of refers to me as like the, the number one person since I'm like the last one standing for my original group. I've been there for like six, seven years. But I don't do anything different from the other coworkers. In fact, I'm I'm, I'm a bit lazier, if I might be honest. <laughs> you can get away with it. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're in charge, man. I actually, re- I'll take that back. I'm actually a hard worker now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. I, I, I'm not even saying that as a joke because I, I just thought about it. And we have some coworkers who do fucking nothing. Well, I mean, it just just based on your position, it's, it's very point. easy to just kind of like, not easy to wing it, but you could choose like the winging it option where you just come in, put your thing in and be like, all right, you know what? I won't Fuck lie. There's days, days where I have nothing and I'm like, we're just going to watch videos. We are going <laughs> to <Like>, watch <laughs> Shrek 2. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm why it's great. <laughs> Bro, I, I swear, there's been days where I go with those kids and I just like share all the best Wikipedia facts that I have. I'm like, this guy <laughs> died making this movie, and they're like, whoa, like, look at the Segway <laughs> guy. He died. The guy who made Segway dies. It's all dead. No, I need you to know that the kids who I have had the opportunity to teach are gonna be trivia fucking masters. Oh, wait, by yeah, the time they're that's adults. funny. Because I have shared some ridiculously stupid shit with them that they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah, I didn't need to tell you that, but I like the, you know. I like to think that you actually didn't like you actually tried disguising it like that part in like the rehearsal where it's like that's not the tallest building in the world the tallest building the bird <laughs> <laughs> you just throw it in everywhere it kind of makes me want to like throw in a throw in my hat teach like a trivia class oh Maybe. shit because the thing with my trivia. no the thing with my trivia practice no yeah the thing with my job is trivia boot camp the thing so the, unfortunately pre-covid our company was very like organized and formatted and then with all the changes that happened after the pandemic we're kind of just like looking for new classes to teach looking for new teachers so there's kind of this thing going where like to fill a slot they'll be like what, what do you really like and one of the the tas will be like i like to knit you're gonna teach knitting class and that's how that shit goes <laughs> so like there have been times where they're like could you do a this class or this class and i'm either like yeah or like that wouldn't really work but i would low-key love to pitch a fucking like trivia class i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna work at your company and teach like, a fucking sports marketing class you or absolutely like that. could that's the funniest fucking i've heard some that's ridiculous cool. programs that they have at other schools where i'm like are you fucking kidding me that they How have these good here? at gta one of the funniest <laughs> <laughs> how to make the most money what was actually interesting is we have a fencing team yo and they yeah. do fencing tournaments and what's pretty funny about it is, is the, that they're good yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> and our our school is known for being like no joke. Out of all of the schools, of we're the best fencing. No, no, no. We're known York. for being the predominantly black and Hispanic school. All the other schools in the program are predominantly white, mm-hmm. and our kids dominate. Oh God, <laughs> that's cool. for what it's worth. Our kids dominate in most sports. They're just athletically gifted. Who'd have fucking thought? But it's yeah. probably that area, man. It's something, yeah. Yeah, something in the water. DC, yeah. Who'd have thought the school filled with nothing but black, Dominican, and Puerto Rican children would be sick at baseball, basketball, and flag football? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and we made the Shocker. semis and ultimate frisbee. Shockingly, the white kid, the schools won that one. But, the, <laughs> but we made semis. We'll take that. Speaking of Hispanics being good at sports, yeah. that was a good oh, fucking segue. I, got I spotted. You, I saw that. I got you. Uh, I watched Hispanics play baseball and other. Games. I don't know if that's how I'd start that. I, I, it's like I set you up for for greatness. <laughs> Hola! Like, I really got to go full voice. Oh, yeah, primos. <laughs> I, I pitched Dylan one down the middle and he bunted that shit. So I got, I got on first though. But uh, yeah, so I saw uh, one of my favorite things, which I feel like maybe I went as like a child and I watched the Mets lose. I was gonna ask, is this your first time or? I think I went when I was a child. Okay. But this was my first adult Subway Series game, famously between the Mets and the Yankees, now the only two baseball teams in New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it started off raining, pouring immediately. Mm. Uh, but always a good sign for a yeah, baseball game. Yeah, always a good sign, but it was one of those, like, the rain will stop in five minutes, just wait it out, right? How, I'm sorry, but how crazy would it have been if following that rain was just another cloud of forest fire smoke? Oh, my God. Like, no! <laughs> it's the Subway Series! <laughs> That's what people were like. Everyone people just got get upset. Ever and no, literally when it started raining, everyone got pissed, and someone was just like, "It ends in nine minutes." I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> but uh, yeah, shout outs. It was like sold out, and uh, what a what a great what a great time. I think my favorite thing is going with my girlfriend, and even now, like she doesn't get everything. Yeah, <laughs> like it's not even that she doesn't understand it. She's like not on board. Like any group chant, she's like this. She's like, "How embarrassing for them," you know? And I'm like. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. It's like a baseball game, you know? And it was Mets Yankees. So, like, obviously, anytime yeah. anyone got on base, the chant started. And she's like, oh, awkward. I'm like, no, that's, <laughs> that's just how it works. <laughs> uh, like, uh, whenever it cuts to anybody, like, in, like, uh, like you know, obviously, it cuts to the camera. Everyone's like, yeah. They do like that. And she's like, why do they do that? It's like, because it's like the logo. Like, it's like the chant. And it's like, no. She just thought they were just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, they're they're animalistic. No. Like, they're very hot. She they're did. fanning themselves. <laughs> Literally, literally. Marianti, their chests are on fire and yeah. they're trying to rip the shirts off. <laughs> the screen. <laughs> they they rip their t shirt and then that way they have a reason when they give the t shirt cannon. Yeah. It's like they give the, That's what they're doing. Yeah. It's burning you. Yeah. Look, I don't have one anymore. <laughs> Oh, that's hysterical. No, I think my favorite uh, dynamic is that our section, for some reason, was like a bunch of like companies Uh and they were having like their like retreat, like fun time. You know what I mean? And there was like a row of like 12 like marketing people or some shit. I don't know what they did, but what an awkward dynamic. If I ran a company, I would never do that shit, honestly. Or invite everyone to the subway. Yeah, be like, hey, we're out. Or I'd pick a (laughs) cheaper baseball game. You know, I love it. The cyclone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, no, no. It's like we're seeing the Mets, but they're playing the Royals yeah. on like a Monday. You know, just some terrible thing. But like, I, I thought it was just funny because I saw like just the awkward conversations between all of these workers that like don't like each other that much. <laughs> and there was a guy all the way on the left, and then he was just like midway through the game, like in one of the hypest moments of the game. He's like, yeah. He's like, I remember when I was bullied in the sixth grade, <laughs> you know, and Marianthi and this other girl who's like a Yankees fan. They're like sitting next to each other and they're like, we're all just like about to die. Like, this guy's <laughs> oh going my deep. God. He's like, he's like, trauma I would have been dumping dying, bro. Yeah, yeah. He's trauma dumping. He's like three beers in. It's it's 11 o'clock at night. It's like the 10th <laughs> inning. I'm like, God, please. Just, well, can we watch the game, man? <laughs> Shut up, boy. It's too late. I'm watching the game. Bro. It has to end soon. But uh, yeah, I watched uh, Walk Off Victory. The I spoiler, know, yeah, no. uh, it was uh, the game went into the extra innings, which now <laughs> extra innings you start with a guy on second base, and mm-hmm. the game doesn't go into two in the morning anymore. It's that's actually yeah, pretty, that's it's actually, actually a sick ass rule. Yeah, it's like a sick it. ass rule. Baseball is getting really so good all long. of a sudden. That's what I'm fucking asking. Well, uh, baseball, yeah, for years baseball was like we honestly the pitcher would bat un- up until a year ago, bro. Baseball, the dude that couldn't fucking hit had the hit. Just bro, cause. baseball got a pitch clock. 
and the United States got Lionel Messi in the same fucking year. Yeah, Sports crazy. are about to pop the fuck off uh-huh. in this country mm-hmm. if they and, weren't and, already. And, and, you, and the you know why they did that though, right? Real quick, I'd argue the most unpopular sport is going to be football, which is kind of crazy to think about. Yeah, but just throwing that's that crazy. Yeah, football's pretty. I mean, no, it's hype. Don't get me wrong, York, but New York for storylines and yeah. shit, like it's not going to be football mm-hmm. anymore. Well, soccer is interesting too because they did a lot of that because the World Cup and Olympics are both going to be in America. Mm-hmm. So that's the Messi's here. So now it's like we run that shit, you know. Hell yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, the guy uh, Brandon Nimmo, my favorite player, he got thrown out doing a uh, cartoony run because he overran <laughs> the base with bases loaded. <laughs> he ran in place a little bit, you know. But uh, he won it in the end. There was fireworks, you know. That's Lit. fucking dope. Uh, nice. Yeah, and but it, the thing was, it was like eleven thirty at night, so like it was. All the Mets fans were just kind of like weathered as always, you know. Yeah. So we were just like, I want to go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, woo! And so, like, literally, someone tried doing like a Yankees suck chant, and it ended immediately. It was like, we know, we know, okay. <laughs> we don't gotta okay. go okay. deeper than we're that. tired too. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're trying to go home. Fire, man. Sounds yeah, fun. but uh, I might go to the Yankee Stadium, have a good time, but or uh, a mediocre time because mm-hmm. you have to go to the Bronx. Yeah. The Bronx. Yeah. The Bronx. Real quick, before we get into jamming the M, I just wanted to throw Jumping one up. last two minute in because it's something I forgot to bring up uh, last episode. Um, mm-hmm. As you guys know, if you follow the show, a few weeks ago I started watching Superstore. Yeah. It's not done yet. No. But I started watching another show in between Superstore. I watched a couple of shows. Yeah. One of the shows I started re watching was iCarly. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Not the original, the new season the new of iCarly. the reboot. Yeah. And. Uh, I just wanted to bring up, and it's not, it's not even this. It's so first of all, they finally put Freddie and Carly together. Uh, like, I've they heard, were, yeah, they were a couple, and I was watching that episode. It's happened like last week. I'm watching the episode. It's like an emotional scene where Carly is in the in the studio, and she has pictures of her and Freddie, and she basically tells him for the first Carly time in the stew. In the stew, mm-hmm. she basically hey, tells yo, him for the first time. Up. She's like, "Cause I need you to hear it from me that I like you and I want to be with you." And he's like, "Are you for real?" And she's like, "I am." And they kiss, and they're finally Shit. together. And granted, I wasn't emotional during that. <laughs> My <laughs> mind was fucking blown. I was like, it, it. For some reason, it wasn't until that moment where I was like, I have been watching these characters for sixteen years. They have been characters on television for 16 years. years. It has taken this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Right? So I was like, holy fucking shit. I was like, in that moment, I was like, because I was the first thing you think about is how long did this take? And then you start to think about how long this took. And you're like, Fuck. And then you were asking, this took a long time. Trash. It's, it's I just wanted to low key, like, love it or hate it. I just wanted to give mad props to iCarly for, I think. I might be wrong here for what I think is the first television show to start out as a kids program and then work its way to being an adult sitcom and having not much change, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? It's the same setup. Like, I don't really know any it really show that's is the, ever done that. It's literally, like, the same exact setup. Like, you watch an episode from back then, you watch an episode now, the jokes and content is different, but, like... <laughs> the all, dynamics, the, the dynamic, the, the chemistry. The same. Like, almost the timing is exactly the yeah, same, too. it's true. I was telling my mom, it's like it low key went from iCarly to Will and Grace, like it, but it was really well done. So I just wanted to to throw a shout out because that show has literally weathered the test of time, and I find it interesting considering when they announced the reboot, everybody was like, "Oh, this could either go really bad or really good," and here they are in season three with hopefully a season four. So Damn. just shout outs because those guys are still killing it after sixteen fucking. I don't want to go into it, but there is another show that is, it was 20 years. They ended in 2003 and then they revived it. Then not revived. They, yeah, revived it in this year, 2023. And they right where they left off. They left, it was, it's animated, but they left it off with like a, they all got frozen. And then it's like, oh, now they're unfrozen 20 years later. Same characters, same dynamic. And they're just going on. That show is clone high. Good show. Mm. But yeah. Now we guess we get to jam and yam. Sounds nice. good. Mm-hmm. You we pull out El Telefono. Yeah. Go through the five jams. Can I go? Can have. I go first? Of course you can. Yeah. So I'm gonna. In th- I was gonna pick a different song originally, but this can maybe go into what Joey was talking about, and also the Mets, and that is uh, Francisco Lindor's walk up song, which is Abayarde by Tego Calderon. Very good song. Uh, very. It almost shows the fact that it's like every Spanish song has like the most fire beat. 
and then the guy starts singing <laughs> or rapping. <laughs> but it, it 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 works. It's a good song. Today was this, a good. Today yeah. was today was a good day. I yeah. got to see the Flash, and I got to hear Dylan say something in Spanish. Let's go. Mm-hmm. I'm hype. Can't roll the R, but I can pronounce it. Yeah, let's go. Uh, jam of the week this week is going to a song called Sputnik by <laughs> Teddy Andreas with a pretty fucking fire feature featuring Freddie fucking Gibbs. Hey, good ass nice. song. Yo, you go. Yo, All right, my Gibbs. slam is "Self Love" uh, from the Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse by Metro and Koi Larey. Um, it's a good song. I I I've been listening to the soundtrack, but the the main three that's always been played. And then I saw a meme that brought up that song, and I was like, I think I skipped that song like all the time. Like, so I gave it a good listen today, and I was like, damn, this song is good. It's the song that plays. It's the first song that plays in the movie when they talk about Gwen and what she's been up to. Mm-hmm. It's in the background while she's monologuing, and it's. I'm like, damn, this is a good song. Fire. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick a song by by Everclear. It's called Santa Monica. Yeah, I was listening to that song the other day. I know, I know that song. Bro, it's my a good coworkers song. are like, "That's you know, a good song." <laughs> yeah, bro, it's a good song. <laughs> Hold on, I, which one is Everclear? Is that like the religious band, or is that that's uh from the, uh, Ned's Declassified? Ned's Declassified. One they did. Uh, their oh, you know what it is? I get them wonderful. confused with Everlast. I don't know why. From Ned's Declassified, what are you talking about? There's an episode where the, the band is in Ned's. You remember? Oh, the, I didn't know that. They <laughs> some weird cameos. It's like, hey, it's the no, guy from the band made cereal. No, you guys know exactly who it is. Remember the episode of Ned's Declassified where he wants to play guitar and he finds out his music teacher is actually a rock star. And he plays the song at the end of the show. Where he's like, "You want to be a rock star?" It's like the white hair. I know guy. what you're talking Maybe. about. That's ever clear. That's the yeah. guy. Look at that. Like uh, the whole aspect is Ned wants to play electric guitar, but he gets an acoustic one. And he has to learn how to play classical. And the teacher's like, "You have to learn." He comes across as like a nerd, but at the end, you find out he's actually like a rock star by night type thing. Mm. So that's the. I call them the Ned's Declassified Band. So that's <laughs> the Ned's Declassified. <laughs> they had a top forty song in the nineties. Yeah. yeah, they, they no, made they were it, great yeah. in the 90s. Yeah. They, they're always on like the 90s Wait, radio on my dad's car, and I always listen to them. Thanks for watching the Joystick Show. Quick apology for losing the audio for the first 20 minutes of the episode. Word. But don't worry about it. You know, it's going to be <laughs> camera audio. Who cares? Who gives Honestly, you shit? The show Who gives looks fuck? good. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't set up all these cameras to be quality. I yeah, mean, you know? come on. Uh, but thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Before we say goodbye, make sure you go ahead and like this episode of The Joystick Show, like I said earlier. And make sure you uh, go ahead and subscribe that's, 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 to that's Team Joystick. That's us. That's us. So uh, without further ado, you like us, we like you. We'll catch you guys in a flash. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> <Zoop>. <laughs> <laughs>